For 25 years, I was part of the high-tech industry. 10 years ago, I was a vice president of the company that provided paid online advice to millions of users all over the world. People used our service for several reasons, like getting help with their home assignments or fixing problems with their computers at home. But guess what was the number one category on our platform? Online psychic reading. <laughs> yes. <laughs> People actually paid hundreds of dollars a month, each month, for a psychic reader who will, for $10 a minute, will communicate with some outer entity and will tell them if the person they have just met is their soulmate. <laughs> this psychic reader will be empathetic. He will tell them his ambiguous views and will, will instruct them, listen, on your next date, please go to the lake and wear a green shirt and ask your date what is her date of birth and tell me what was the color of her shoes. And don't forget to come back next week for another paid session. <laughs> you are laughing, but the company was sold for lots of money. It was a nice exit. <laughs> really? <laughs> <laughs> well, at the same time, I finished my MA in philosophy, and my inner ethics evolved. Till then, I, I acted as a classic executive. I saw customers as walking dollar bills that I need to grab, and not as humans that my product affect their lives. The great philosopher Immanuel Kant introduced a new ethical rule, which is called the categorical imperative, which means judge your actions as if you want everybody to act the same. Following that, my inner voice told me I must do much better things with my life. I didn't know it then, but this was a changing moment for me, and it changed all of my life. I started volunteering in a supermarket at Jerusalem. This supermarket was a cooperative, a non-profit business operated by the community for the community. It was located in a low-income neighborhood in Jerusalem. Since one of its missions was to empower the local community, a social worker will come there once a week to assist people with their personal problems. I was amazed but what I heard from people that waited on a line for this social worker. One lady asked her, hey, I was just divorced and I have two kids. What are my rights as a working single parent? And someone else asked her, hey, my mother just broke her hip. What are the rights that she can get? Since there was no central information system that everybody can see what are the rights that you can eligible to, people need a mediator, an expert, that will manually assist them in their getting this information and help. This lack of knowledge caused many families not to get the help at the time when they most needed it. Well, life is fragile. A few years afterwards, I found myself standing in such a social worker line. My young daughter, Arbel, was diagnosed as type 1 diabetes, juvenile diabetes. This means that she needs to stab her finger 10 times a day and inject insulin into her body a few times a day just in order to survive. This was a life-changing moment for Arbel, for me, and for the whole family. For a long time, we were running between doctors, trying to get the best diagnosis and treatments. Over time, we got physically and mentally exhausted. We could even get bankrupt. What we didn't know at the time was that Arbel, because of her condition, is entitled to many economical, economic and social benefits from dozens of organizations like, you know, Social Security, the Health Ministry, Insurance, Education Ministry, Employment Ministry for, for Parents' Rights, information from dozens of websites. 
I spent days just to find the relevant information that I needed at the time when the family was in a huge stress. As an example, only a few years afterwards, we found that we were eligible to 30% discount on our municipality tax, Arnona, which is worth about $1,000 a year each year. Why is it so hard to find this information? Because government agencies are silos. Each one is an expert in its own domain, having its own website with its own rules, and they are all separated and not connected. Even if you found the relevant information you were looking for, since entitlements are actually laws written by lawyers for lawyers, an average person could not understand what they mean. By now, any average person will say, hey, thank you, I'll quit. It's too complicated. This is why on average, in developed countries, people utilize only 50% of what they are entitled to. Let me repeat that. We take only half of the benefits that we can get. Are we suckers or friaring? <laughs> Listen, billions of dollars are waiting each year for us to take them, for families that need them, and nobody is coming to claim. This is not only for low-income families, but also to high-educated, average-income households. In non-developed countries, this utilization rate is even much lower. I will give you an example that will shock most of you. If you or your kids are ill, you don't take a vacation day for your, vacation day for your work. You take a sick leave. You are not firing. But if one of your parents is ill or need to go to a doctor and he needs your assistant, you can also take the same sick leave from your work and not a vacation date. Well, I found there must be a solution for all of that. There must be a central website with all the information about our rights, benefits and entitlements in one place in all the dom life domains, with all the content from top experts, free, and with all relevant information, how we can realize that. So I met my friend Amitai Korn, and we created Call Strut, All Rights in English. All Rights is a non-profit organization, and is today the de facto Israeli website for all rights and entitlements. Last year, four million different citizens use our website, which is about two-thirds of the Israeli adult population. And we are helping 30% of more, of more of them each year. This is huge. One of the most amazing things for me is to hear from our users. Recently, I got an email from an 18-year-old teenager who wrote me, that she just escaped from her parents' home because two of her parents have a drinking problem. By using our website, she was able to find a place to sleep, a grant that she can apply for, and she found a program that may give her a new start in life. Imagine a world when something happening in your life like a new baby was born, or maybe you opened a new business, or you might be get got fired, or suffer from some kind of disability, then you will get a personalized message. Like you get today from Facebook when something happened on your social network, that will detail all the benefits and rights that you can get. And in one click, it will be realized. There is a great Jewish virtue called tikkun olam, or repair the world in English, which means an aspiration to behave beneficially to your surroundings. I see that there are many people here in the audience that are in the start or the midst of their career and life. For me, to create a service that touched so many people's lives is a priceless reward. If someone will ask my advice, 
what way should I take? I will tell them, stay away from psychic readers. <laughs> Try to do good to yourself and others. Speaking of career paths, my daughter, Arbel, followed her career, followed her love. <laughs> you don't know what, what her love brought her. She just won the second and third place in the World Championship of JKS Carter in Scotland last year. My personal tikkun olam is to make Kolschut All Rights a worldwide, world-class service. What is yours? Thank you.